Mary Meet, Annie here. I really enjoyed the first week of being part of the YouTube Pagan Challenge. I got to hear from a lot of you that I haven't heard from in a long time, since I haven't been doing videos on YouTube in a long time. And I got to hear from new viewers. And I really appreciated that. It reminded me why I enjoy being part of this community so much. And I also began to think that the opportunity we have from the weekly topics on the YouTube Pagan Challenge end up being in part those bites of information and sharing that we all put out there and additionally they're a chance for conversation. I really enjoyed some of the comments and feedback I got on the video itself but I also received so many really interesting emails from all of you. And a lot of you were introducing yourself to me. And that made me happy this week to meet so many new, wonderful, beautiful souls. Whatever you're in doubt about the value of spending time here in this community, uh, take a moment to be grateful. A moment of reverence I share from my experience for the beauty you find. Think of that as the reason why we connect here. I wanted to make a video on specifically on the topic of sharing and making decisions about what we'll share here. The truth is we all decide what we'll share and what we won't share. I had an interesting conversation, surprisingly, with many people who reached out to me privately during this first week of the YouTube Pagan Challenge. It was about sharing how we found our path, how we got to be here. And something happened as a recurring pattern that made me sad. Let me put it that way. I was trying to think, does it concern me or how did I feel? Mostly I felt sad. I also felt very honored that many of you shared with me that you gave some thought to whether you wanted to do your first video, perhaps, ever join in the YouTube Pagan Challenge and share. But you had experiences in groups, in other internet discussions, even here on YouTube if you've attempted to do videos before, where you felt like when you shared where you came from, it was a cause for others to, in a way, belittle you or not give you the respect that you're due. And there's specifics around that. And I saw it beautifully captured in many, many videos that I watched this past week. I've tried to watch, even though I don't have time to comment, every one of the YouTube Pagan Challenges. I've made a promise to myself to do that. Very often, those who were sharing shared that they were first inspired to understand there was something new to experience or to explore beyond the spirituality they may have experienced or the formal religion they may have experienced growing up. There was something beyond that that they first came in touch with through a book or a TV show, here on YouTube watching videos, all the different ways that people have come in contact with those who are sharing or those who are writing, paid or not, professional or not, regarding the pagan path. And so many of you shared that your first experiences were seeing a certain TV show, or being inspired by a certain movie, being inspired by especially a couple of powerful YouTubers when the pagan community was just beginning here. And then there were authors of books. Many of those books were the ones that came out, I guess they would have been coming out in the late 80s, I would assume. Scott Cunningham and Silver Raven Wolf and some of those authors that were coming out that were your first contact with the concept of what earth-based practices might be if they weren't the ones that were indigenous to your land. We all don't have the good fortune to be in touch with the indigenous practices of our lands because we may not in our history and our families be indigenous to the land. So if we don't have that opportunity to explore those roots in our actual blood family some of us discovered the possibility 
of honoring the earth as sacred, honoring God's connected to that earth, and understanding how we were connected to that, and then to others who felt the same way. Many of you shared that. And then I started getting emails from those who were timid to share that, because they had felt that they weren't taken seriously by at least some members of the community because their first steps into exploring earth-based pagan practices were simplistic in the sense it was reading a book or being inspired by something they'd seen on YouTube. Here's what I want to share about that. And I'm sharing about that from this perspective of now, which is very different than the perspective I would have had when I was in my 20s or 30s. When those books first started coming out, I didn't much like them. I thought they misrepresented us. I thought they would mislead folks. I had quite the attitude about them. And then when I found myself, for the first time in my life, outside of practicing in a coven, so moving away from the traditional practice that I had grown up in through my 20s and into my 30s, uh, when I was practicing solo for the first time, I began to have an understanding for the power of those things. I wanted to share that in this video about what we choose to share for a couple of reasons. To encourage those of you who may have been hesitant to share in the YouTube Pagan Challenge or elsewhere what your first inspirations were, what your first inklings of what might be were, when you think of how others might view that. And I also wanted to share it to remind my younger self, who was a bit of a bigot when it came to those who didn't come up in my tradition or a similar tradition, and perhaps those of us who are still out there having an attitude about brothers and sisters, that come to us from ways different than we came up. When I look back over my time, so through my 40s and 50s and now into my 60s, I have come to believe that those the old gods recognize, because they know that we are seeking them. We are seeking connection to the land. We are seeking connection to the gods of the land. What if the gods reside in us? How we can reach out to them, how the experience of them transforms the smallest moments of our livings. I truly believe the old gods are alive and present and fully engaged in every aspect of contemporary living. And for those of us who are seriously seeking a connection to the ancient ways, it might be a Scott Cunningham book. It might be any of the hundreds now of Llewellyn publications. Our gods find ways to reach out to those of us who are alone, who don't have a means of connecting with others face to face in a community that would like to come together to celebrate them. One of my biggest lessons in learning this was a beloved sister in one of my previous circles. When I met her, I recognized her soul. I recognized who she was and who she was in the world, and I felt especially Goddess moving through her. And when I learned more about her, to my surprise, her only experience in any formal sense of what celebrating Earth-based spirituality and the God and the Goddess might be, was her reading of Scott Cunningham's books. Oh, she went on in time because she wasn't a young woman to read everything she could get her hands on and to then have conversations with everyone she could. But the truth is, I learned through being with her in circle, understanding the energy that she brought and what she connected to, that the old ones had reached out to her. And it caused me to stop and think over and over again. It is not just that we are calling out to them, sometimes waiting to see what responds. It is very often they understand the yearning in our souls and they reach out to us. And they'll make use of anything that exists in the contemporary world. Beware. 
when you're new to sharing on YouTube and you feel that anyone is not accepting your history and your experience so far as valid. That's the gods providing you with a great opportunity for self-awareness and even protection. Disengage from those people. You have to wonder sometimes, these old gods that some of us came to, we picked up our first Llewellyn witchcraft book. And we feel it deeply and intensely and passionately. And the gods walk with us side by side in our lives. When we are judged by others, don't hesitate to have a conversation with yourself. To remind yourself that you are a child of the gods as they have reached out to you. And if others don't understand that the gods will reach out to us in so many different ways in this world we live in now, here and now, what gods are then touching them? Probably, we can assume, something very different than what you have connected with. Oh, you still might have a lot in common with those who got here a different way than you did. But there is so much power in the fact that your yearning brought you to a place of openness so that in whatever way they could, the old ones reached out to you in the pages of a book and a few words muttered somewhere in a movie or a TV show that just resonated deeply with you. In some shiny moments of videos you watched, especially from what I think of as the early witchy pioneers here on YouTube. The power that moved through you, the power that made you one with your gods, will connect you with others who have connected to those same energies. It doesn't matter if some can't see that or understand that. I spent the first couple of decades in my Wiccan practices not understanding that. I'm better for understanding that the gods that I worship are bigger than what we celebrated cloistered in our circles. And that any of us both reach out to those same gods in our own way, or if I let humility enter the picture, those gods, my gods, the ones that I think I know in a very specific point on way, reach out to others who are opening their hearts and their souls to them in whatever way the contact can be made. That moment of epiphany can be watching sunrise, or snowfall, or the birth of a baby, or the adoring look in your dog, gazing up at you in perfect love and trust. It can as well be words in a book, the voice of someone who's sharing online in some way. Even the constructed fantasy world of movies and television shows. You know what your explorations, no matter the form of them, have put you in touch with. In the end, it's about what we connect to, what moves through us, what we channel, what we learn to work with. Putting ourselves at one with the ancient flow. That's what you have in common with others who honor the existence of that. Some won't. They'll see themselves outside of that in a very specific relationship to their deities. And they might not understand that there are more ways than their way to come in touch with that very same energy. I've come to embrace the concept that the ancient ones are also the contemporary ones. We speak to them, and they speak to us sometimes in a very modern language. Dare to be in intimate, genuine, and powerful conversation with the gods in whatever form they have made themselves known to you. And always, I speak this to myself now. 
always be open to the possibility by listening and being engaged with them to know that every day of your life is an expansion of your relationship with them. It's an expansion of your possibilities and by your very existence you expand the possibilities of the gods. The real here and now. Share your experiences as you're comfortable. But know when you are belittled it's a lack of understanding, a lack of insight, perhaps a bit of elitism, a lack of wisdom in life's experience on the part of those who are critical that you have joined our community in a way different from how they did. I want to hear your stories, all of your stories. That's the greatest joy I take about being part of this community. I honor you so much for what you bring, each and every one of you. And that's my sharing for the day. Brought on by the beautiful correspondences I've received from so many of you this past week. Bright and shining brothers and sisters all. I wish you mirth and reverence. Mary Park. <laughs>